the situation has certainly gone downhill as far as the weather conditions uh, here in the downtown area, in the French Quarter area. Financial news. We are gathering more updates regarding the effects the dot-com bubble is now having on the business center across the United States, most notably, from one of its most well-known construction companies, known as Crimson Building Technologies. Founded in Beverly Hills since 1969 and headquartered in Houston, Texas, they were well-known in inventing or developing high-quality modular construction materials, while well, they were heavily involved in construction projects, with the most recent contribution was the massive reconstruction effort of over 50,000 homes and 6,000 high-rise office buildings after the onslaught of Hurricanes Hugo and Andrew. In both cases, they were built with the best modular construction materials and their outstanding and professional skills in architecture and engineering. The company was also known for their philanthropic efforts, such as donating $750,000 for the creation of Amtrak's Acela high-speed service back in 1999, which is expected to begin operations somewhere around next month, and over $400,000 for charity. But now, it has been over four weeks after the Crimson Building Technologies have become public in the trade market, that their stock prices immediately began to plummet after the market bubble had burst around the early 2000s. As a result, the construction company has lost over $16 million in revenue, and the company has lost from over $879 per share, leading it to its lowest share price of over $150 as of the start of November. The Crimson Building Technologies, as we speak, is filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection under Chapter 11, Title 11, United States Code, as according to the spokesperson representing the Crimson Building Technologies, that they are at over $1.5 billion in debt because of the recession and the dot-com bubble, and it is unknown whether their company can safely hold up for restructure before they would have to liquidate all their assets and close down. There have been some positive or sympathetic reactions from people who are worried about the company's possible demise, and some are pursuing to retain its existence by supporting that company through donations, volunteer work, or sending requests to both the state government of Texas, which is where that company is originated in the city of Houston, and the U.S. federal government, to give the company loans, in order to aid their company restructuring. However, among those who are willing to help the Crimson Building Technologies, there is an increasingly negative public opinion against the company. According to former employees who used to work with Crimson Building Technologies, they allegedly claimed that the employers from the Crimson Building Technologies were harshly treating their workers, and they suspected that they had breached numerous legal and ethical regulations, as strictly enforced by the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. These allegations dated at least back in late 70s during the oil crisis that was caused by both the Yom Kippur War and the Iranian Revolution. It was up to that point that others wanted to see the end of the Crimson Building Technologies, hence, some were protesting right outside the Texas State Capitol in Austin, Texas, demanding that the state government not give them any funds, and they outright opposed their existence. There have been serious accusations from some of the individuals that the company was hiding something, and that they are suspected to be involved in a conspiracy. The CEO and manager of the Crimson Building Technologies, Sean Tannerman, has denied any of their responsibility, and asserted that these allegations are, quote-unquote, not true, and are also a disgusting, shameful, and the dirtiest way to attempt to bring down the company that has good spears. While they were known for their outstanding engineering efforts and their philanthropy for the benefit of the lower or middle social classes, they have since been under investigation twice, once in 1981 and again in 1993. In both cases, the company were suspected or were allegedly responsible for criminal negligence, mistreatment of workers, and most significant of all, the murders of whistleblowers who are former Crimson employees who claimed they had come forward to release incriminating information. But so far, there has been no evidence admissible enough to put the company into a criminal trial, or even convince the jurors to declare them guilty.
However, it seems that more and more calls for the company to cease operation is slowly increasing by the day after unsolved murders have brought up thanks to a few of the independent journalists who they refuse to let the case be forgotten, though it still remains to be seen. And now we have met with some of our residents who are willing to show us their loving comments regarding their new homes they have just brought across New Orleans as they are impressed by its smooth texture and quality, but also its rigidness and somehow high structural strength. The first building prototypes began construction back in March 2005 at the approval of New Orleans Mayor Ray Nagin as part of their suburban renewal in a bid to solve America's housing crisis. Especially in New Orleans, where Crimson Building Technology says that has their own test bed and said they will have their housing costs insured. So, let's start with one of our interviewers who they have been waiting for a while now. So, Annika, what do you think of your new home with a new kind of wall to put in? It looks wonderful. Not only that it can work with any kind of paint or sticker, but these are interchangeable plastic bricks or metal sheet walls, and they could either be assembled or be added for additional support with another solid wall. That sure definitely keep our homes comfortable, especially when we have an AC at full blast. This is something that couldn't be done at this time of year, yet, here we are. This goes to show from the Crimson Building technologies that they could do too. Thank you, Miss Anka. I appreciate that. And it's not just people living in their homes, we're also interviewing one of the employees who are working on their computer tech business, which is located right in downtown, where temperatures there are expected to rise by the end of the wear season in case of a cold wave. Now, Mr. Carl, what do you think of the new insulation wall that was recently installed? In my opinion, I find it the most comfortable, even if it's on a brick building. By installing an association panel, or a wall, even a foam, or synthetic fiber plastic made by Crimson. But in technologies, I can still either feel warm on cold days, and I can feel cool during hot days. It's like a temperature controlling kind of material too. I feel like this is the best material for association and for building structures to boot. Thank you, Carl. And, oh... It looks like we're going to have to cut off the interviewing session for our incoming sponsors that have supported our broadcast. This is WRNOFM, and I'm Josh Montalbano. We'll be back after a commercial break, followed by our station identification header, and we'll go on to our no weather forecast after a short commercial break.
We are now getting some evening news coming in from New Orleans, where just over two weeks ago, Hurricane Katrina made landfall in the state of Louisiana. The storm, with its peak strength reaching over 175 miles per hour as a Category 5 storm, has caused flooding in numerous areas, from Florida up to much of the Gulf Coast and in the central and eastern United States, with New Orleans suffering the worst flooding in its history, as almost 80% of the city was submerged, in addition to most buildings suffering severe structural damage. Now two weeks have passed and the floodwaters in some areas have mostly receded, and throughout that time, rescue and cleanup crews are working day and night to clear the debris, and to locate any survivors who are either missing or left behind, and not able to evacuate on time. Joining tonight, Jack McCain, who he's with one of the cleanup crews located in the city neighborhood of Lakeview. McCain, are you on? Yes, Bill, I can hear you. As you can see, our cleanup crews are now making progress. As you can see around me, there are a lot of buildings that have floodwater marks. It signifies how tall the floodwaters have reached here. By estimation, as I use the ruler, it said that the floods were about six and a half feet deep. In addition, I have seen some buildings, including those built by the Crimson Buildings Technologies, have accumulated a large amount of mold than any other building we encountered. That looks hella creepy and disgusting, and those things need to be cleared out as soon as possible, because who knows when it will spread or what effect it will have on us. I do not know, but I could see that this is quite creepy too. And it could be serious. I suggest that they have to search all over the city for these huge mold formations. I suspect that there has to be something in that material that could have generated more mold than any other building, and, again, I do not know what effect this may have on us. Yeah, you're right. That could be dangerous. We'll give you updates once we're done. See you soon, Bill. Thank you. We'll keep in touch, and stay safe. The following message is transmitted at the request by the New Orleans Police Department and the Louisiana Emergency Management Agency. Approximately 20 minutes ago, reports regarding several individuals suddenly falling ill were coming into local and federal authorities. Patients who are inflicted with an unknown type of illness are being sent to nearby field hospitals. Some of the victims are recorded to have the following symptoms, nausea, severe headaches, chills, weakness in their muscles and joints, pain in the chest, head, and abdomen, severe coughing, fever of over 110 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, coughing up blood, vomiting of blood, and bleeding from the eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. Initial reports estimate that at least over 150, mostly rescue and cleanup crews from the downtown area of New Orleans are experiencing these symptoms, and they are all being treated. As a precaution, all residents hearing this message are advised that you stay in your homes. If you do not have your residence as a result of Hurricane Katrina, please stay in your designated emergency shelter until it is declared safe by the proper authorities. If you have a life-threatening emergency, call 911. However, as a result of Hurricane Katrina, please be advised that some of the phone lines are down, and emergency vehicles may not be able to reach your location, therefore 911 is only open for emergency use. Stay tuned to your local radio station or other media sources for the latest information and updates on this current situation. This is WWL. My name's Dave Clark, and we are on an emergency broadcast at an 870 AM frequency. If you are preferring to use an FM frequency, then I apologize, because power across New Orleans and most of the Louisiana state are still out because of Katrina, so FM frequency is still unavailable for the time. Today is September 18, 2005, at 21 minutes past 12 midnight. 
Now, for those who have just tuned in, an emergency alert system has just issued a civil emergency message for the city of New Orleans not too long ago, advising all residents there to stay in the designated emergency shelters, and it is discouraged to leave, unless it's declared safe by the proper authorities. The reason is that there has been an ongoing medical emergency coming from the devastated ruins of New Orleans. According to FEMA and the New Orleans Police Department and Emergency Management Agency, there have been at least over 150 people currently experiencing the following symptoms. Nausea, severe headaches, chills, weakness in their muscles and joints, pain in the chest, head, and abdomen, severe coughing, fever of over 110 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, coughing up blood, vomiting of blood, and bleeding from the eyes, nose, ears, and mouth. Most of the victims who are afflicted with this illness are from the search and rescue and cleanup crews sent by both the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the United States Army, some of them volunteers from the Army and from the local government, and a small majority are civilians who either waited out the storm or were there to recover the belongings as some sources claimed. In the Louisiana Superdome where thousands of refugees are sheltered there, there are currently no reports of persons who have these symptoms, though because they are located right within downtown where this medical emergency was reported, and that it was still surrounded by floodwaters, that may be subject to change, and who knows what's gonna happen if someone might be infected there. There are rumors claiming that this unknown illness that has affected over a hundred people, might be the result of the huge formation of a nasty mold, that has been formed on several housing blocks and office complexes, that were inundated with floodwater brought on by Hurricane Katrina, and it is possible that these persons may have breathed in the spores close to its proximity. The only connection is that these affected buildings were built by the construction company firm called Crimson Building Technologies, and according to the map data, these buildings are centered in the French Quarter and financial district areas, and some of which, all of them residential, are littered across the city suburbs just north of downtown, which are located almost close to Lake Pontchartrain. Almost all of these buildings, including those near both the Mississippi River and Lake Pontchartrain, are submerged by floodwaters, and they are now showing signs of increased accumulation of mold. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Federal Bureau of Investigation are currently investigating this ongoing medical emergency by analyzing both the patients and the mold that grew on those afflicted buildings to study this unknown illness and to see if there is any more research in value or if there is a way to cure this illness. They are also considering whether to launch a criminal investigation on the Crimson Building Technologies, as these prefabricated and modular structures were constructed by that company, and while they were renowned for their best skills and ingenuity in engineering and their outstanding philanthropic efforts, they have been previously accused or suspected for unsafe working conditions, unethical company practices, workplace violence, numerous legal and ethical violations, and most recently of all, since 2000, amidst the peak of the dot-com bubble, they are also suspected for conspiracy, and for murdering former Crimson officials and employees who have been attempting to release or send incriminating information to either the news media or the federal government in an effort to hide the truth. And now we're back with more news regarding the discovery of an exponentially large mold formation. We have received word not too long ago that there had been over hundreds of people currently experiencing what some said to be unknown type of illness. We do not know how that happened, but there has been strong speculation going on that this must be related to the mold that was found on numerous buildings, mostly in the downtown area of New Orleans, and in the suburbs near Lake Pontchartrain. And we also got reports that at least over six people who have taken shelter inside the Louisiana Superdome have contracted with the unknown illness. Though most of the refugees have been hauled out from the dome to emergency shelters by military trucks after Katrina dissipated, there are still dozens or up to hundreds of people remaining inside the Superdome due to limited capacity. Now here in the Superdome area, we are joining tonight with our longtime correspondent, Nathan Rosenthal, who has been on the field surveying the damage across New Orleans for two weeks, and he is now witnessing firsthand that the possibility that an outbreak of an unknown illness is brewing. Nathan, you're up. All right, Bill. Thank you. I'm on the line, and I'm currently standing right within the distance outside the Louisiana Superdome. Or yes, as you can see, there's a bit of chaos. Emergency sirens are blaring as police cars, military trucks, and armed guards are cordoned off the air to prevent anyone going near. Dozens of masked men are seen running by heading inside the Superdome. According to the National Guard and the CDC, they claim that the entire Superdome is now under quarantine in which no one goes in and no one goes out. 
I say that is some scary stuff right there. I hope these people will be okay now that this place is under quarantine. Unathan, have you seen any of the molded buildings that are located right across the Superdome? I mean, where do you think that illness came from? I have no idea. However, we did get some brief information regarding the Superdome. Recently, some of the walls and ceiling panels inside the lower level facilities, mainly the ground floor and basement levels, have been replaced with the insulation wall that was built by the Crimson Building Technologies since the start of August 2005. So I guess that might be the possible culprit. Come to think of it, that could be the case, since this is quite similar to what we have last heard about the cleanup crew at Lakeview. The patients there claim that they have encountered some buildings that have a ton of mold growing out after being inundated with floodwaters, and they must have inhaled some of the spores while trying to clean them out or while they are in a close proximity. Most of the personnel sent out by FEMA, the U.S. Army and National Guard, including a few of the civilians who either returned to recover lost belongings or had rode out in the storm, didn't have any protective breathing equipment. Nate, do you think this illness might be airborne and could spread from person to person? By spores, if they're at close proximity of these being disturbed, then the mold will be releasing spores as a result of physical contact. Now, regarding concerns about human transmission, it's hard to say how this unknown illness could spread or be transmitted since we do not have any information at this time and the CDC has just begun investigating, so time will tell. Nathan, was that gunshots? What's happening? I, I don't know. I heard it sound like gunshots, and now I see soldiers and a few riot police officers running inside the Superdome. I don't worry about this, but from what I can see, I can tell that something doesn't feel right over there. The following message is transmitted at the request by the New Orleans Police Department, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, and the National Guard. Since five minutes ago, there have been unconfirmed reports of riots taking place inside the Louisiana Superdome. Witnesses describe the attackers acting out in a cannibalistic and violent behavior, as they are seen engaging against law enforcement. Riot police along with members of the National Guard are currently dealing with this situation, but there is an uncertain possibility that this may escalate. For your own safety, all New Orleans residents hearing this message are strongly advised to stay away from the Louisiana Superdome and to not start any riots. Doing so will put your life at risk, and you will be arrested. Attempt to resist arrest and you may face execution. Be prepared with The following is an urgent update regarding an ongoing situation. A law enforcement warning is no longer in effect. A civil danger warning is in effect. It is discovered that the rioters who are attacking law enforcement do not appear to be ordinary human beings. This is compounded with claims made by both the riot police and the evacuees that the rioters are also attacking other nearby civilians and evacuees in a violent and cannibalistic manner, even as far as biting or eating the human flesh. Military and police personnel guarding the perimeter of the Louisiana Superdome are unable to contain the spread as the attackers begin overwhelming the perimeter guards in large numbers and are now spreading out across the streets, attacking any person they see. The identities of these original attackers are currently ongoing. All residents hearing this message are urged to do the following actions, stay calm and do not panic. If you are in a home, board up all doors and windows and prepare an emergency supply kit for your stay. If outdoors, find the nearest sturdy structure. If you are in or near a working vehicle, try to use it by all means to outrun the attackers if they are approaching near your position, if you could do so safely. If you have a weapon, such as a firearm, or a sharp or blunt object, 
the use of lethal force is authorized to protect yourself and others, so use them by all means necessary if any individuals try to attack you. Do not let the attackers find you at any cost. We will continue to give you new information as soon as it is available. Continue to monitor local news stations or other media outlets for further details and instructions. message is transmitted at the request by the Bad Rouge Police Department. Numerous reports of hostile individuals, known as zombies, that are attacking civilians through means of biting or consuming human flesh, are reported across the downtown areas and in the suburbs across Baton Rouge, especially in areas near the Mississippi River. According to the initial findings with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, it is revealed that these creatures were the result of the toxic mold that was grown on the waterlogged buildings that were recently built by the Crimson Building Technologies. Reported symptoms for those who inhale the spores from the mold include, but may not be limited to, severe nausea, dehydration, pain on the muscles and joints, fatigue, headaches, seizures, burning sensation of the lungs and throat, coughing or vomiting of blood, bleeding on their eyes, nose, ears, and mouth, blood vision, rotting of the skin, and agitation. In some critical cases, they may also experience respiratory failure, brain damage, and cardiac arrest followed by death. The final stage of the mold infection is that there's at least 85% chance that those who succumb to the toxic spores may reanimate and transform into these same creatures and will inhibit their violent and cannibalistic behaviors towards non-infected civilians. These events have led to the issuing of the civil danger of your area. Residents are strongly advised to do the following actions. Stay indoors. Do not go outside unless absolutely necessary. Under any circumstances, stay away from any buildings that are submerged in floodwaters or any building that has huge mold accumulations as you may risk inhaling these spores. Prepare a week worth supply of emergency rations such as food and water for your stay. Barricade all points of entry, such as doors and windows, and shut off any and all ventilation and air conditioning. If you have a weapon, such as a knife, a blunt object or a firearm, use it by all means necessary. If you see any of these creatures, do not attempt to reason with them, as they will instantaneously begin to attack any living being without question. If you get bitten, commit suicide immediately or have someone euthanize you. At present, there is no known cure or vaccine for this toxic mold infection. Stay tuned to this station or other news media outlets and sources to continue receiving further updates and instructions for the civil danger warning product. interrupt your programming. This is a national emergency. 
Important instructions will follow. The following message is transmitted at the request by the United States government and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This is not a test. Reports of zombie-like creatures have been reported in several states across much of the southern United States and in parts of the Midwest. These states that are currently inhabiting these creatures are the following, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Virginia, and West Virginia. These creatures that are attacking the human race were revealed to be the result of an infection caused by a huge accumulation of a toxic mold grown on buildings inundated by floodwaters brought on by Hurricane Katrina. The first reports of the virus outbreak was from New Orleans, Louisiana, where over 150 people have fallen ill to this deadly toxin, and it has since escalated into a zombie epidemic. These creatures can be identified by the following characteristics, bloodshot eyes with dilated pupils, rotting skin, blood dripping from the eyes, ears, mouth, and teeth, numerous skin cuts and abrasions, torn clothing, sharpened teeth, inability to speak, being able to run almost as fast as the athletic sprinter, and exhibiting violent and cannibalistic behavior. Any persons who were attacked by these individuals through means of biting or transmission of bodily fluids will become one of these creatures after one or five minutes of infection. This is a dangerous situation as both the toxic mold and its zombie-like creatures pose an extreme threat to human life. Martial law has been declared in these aforementioned states and martial law may follow in other states as the situation continues. The following actions must take place immediately. If you reside in or near an infected U.S. state, seek shelter in a sturdy building and board up all doors and windows. Once inside, do not go outside, or travel outdoors for any reason unless absolutely necessary. If you see a dark greenish-brown mold in your area, stay away from the mold and avoid breathing in these spores. You could become infected and then reanimate into these creatures. Prepare an emergency kit of food, water, clothing, medical supplies, and a battery-powered radio for your stay in your shelter. Civilians, if you can do so safely, must evacuate to the northern or midwestern states, as emergency shelters are being set up there to house evacuees. For those residing in or near a non-infected U.S. state, continue to monitor local news radio or television sources to receive further details and updates, and prepare to evacuate, if told to do so by the authorities. If you are bitten by these creatures or are experiencing symptoms of this toxic mold, it is urged that you commit suicide immediately, through either aiming at the form between the eyes using a firearm or a slit of a throat with a bladed object, or have your companion or your loved one to euthanize you, as there is currently no known cure for this infection, and attempting to delay the inevitable may bring more danger to those around you. The President will be speaking shortly on all stations regarding these events. Stand by for this message. This is an emergency action notification. All broadcast and cable stations shall transmit this emergency action notification message. We have interrupted programming at the request of the White House to participate in the emergency alert system. During this emergency, most stations will remain on the air to provide news and information to the public in assigned areas. This is WGCL. This station will continue to serve the Atlanta area. If you are not in this area, you should tune your television or radio to a station providing news in your area. You are listening to the emergency alert system serving the Atlanta area. Do not use the telephone. The telephone lines must be used for emergencies. The emergency alert system has been activated.
Este es un sistema nacional de alerta de emergencia, transmitido por orden del gobierno de los Estados Unidos mexicanos. Esto no es un taladro. Se está produciendo una emergencia nacional que afectará en gran medida su seguridad y supervivencia. Aproximadamente a las 4 pm, una gran horda de criaturas misteriosas, conocidas como zombies o criaturas parecidas a zombies, cruzaron la frontera entre Estados Unidos y México y abrumaron a las fuerzas de seguridad fronterizas. Actualmente, estos zombies han comenzado a atacar los estados de Coahuila, Nuevo León y Tamaulipas. Estas criaturas se informaron por primera vez en el sur de los Estados Unidos y se formaron como resultado de una infección de moho tóxico que se originó en Nueva Orleans, Luisiana, como resultado del huracán Katrina. Aunque no está confirmado, se afirma que estas criaturas que han cruzado la frontera entre Estados Unidos y México se han vuelto más fuertes y han aumentado en fuerza y tamaño. Parecen ser más resistentes a las armas de fuego convencionales y se vuelven aún más violentos y agresivos, posiblemente como resultado de su exposición a climas cálidos o cálidos, en comparación con su eficacia en el clima del norte, donde los avances hacia el territorio invasor se debilitan considerablemente. Estas criaturas están siendo investigadas por las autoridades sanitarias de nuestro gobierno, en cooperación con los Centros para el Control y la Prevención de Enfermedades de E.E. Uh -huh. Y las Fuerzas Armadas de México están siendo enviadas para hacer frente a la situación. Estos zombies se pueden identificar con las siguientes características. Ojos inyectados en sangre con pupilas dilatadas, piel podrida, sangre goteando de los ojos, oídos, boca y dientes, numerosos cortes y abrasiones en la piel, ropa desgarrada, dientes afilados, incapacidad para hablar, siendo capaz de correr casi tan rápido como el velocista atlético y exhibir un comportamiento violento y caníbal. Cualquiera de estos individuos que exhiba estas características ataca a las personas no infectadas a través de sus mordeduras o transmisión de fluidos corporales. Aquellos que fueron atacados se transformarán en estas criaturas en menos de uno a cinco minutos después del contacto inicial con el moho tóxico o el propio virus zombie. Se recomienda encarecidamente a todos los residentes que sigan las siguientes instrucciones. Si residen o cerca de un estado infectado, refúgiese en el lugar. Bloquee o bloquee todas las puertas y ventanas. Prepare un suministro de emergencia de alimentos, agua, suministros médicos, ropa adicional y una radio a batería. Una vez dentro, no salga al exterior por ningún motivo a menos que sea absolutamente necesario. Podrías infectarte si entras en contacto con estas criaturas. Si debe evacuar, diríjase al oeste o al sur, o a estados que no estén infectados o donde no haya informes de infección, si puede hacerlo de manera segura, tranquila y ordenada. Aquellos que no puedan evacuar deben permanecer en un refugio. Si reside en un estado no infectado, continúen monitoreando las noticias locales y las fuentes de radio para obtener más actualizaciones y esté preparado para evacuar cuando lo soliciten las autoridades locales o federales. Si ve a una persona infectada, no intente atacarla usted mismo o corre el riesgo de ponerse en peligro a usted mismo y a los demás. Si adquiere un arma, como un arma de fuego o un objeto puntiagudo o contundente, utilícela por todos los medios necesarios para protegerse a sí mismo y a los demás. Si estas criaturas te muerden, no dejes que la infección te alcance. Se recomienda enfáticamente que se suicide de inmediato, no solo por el bien de los seres queridos que lo rodean, sino por el bien de toda la nación, ya que actualmente no existe una cura conocida para este virus, se le insta a mantener la calma y no entrar en pánico. Entrar en pánico solo hará que las situaciones de emergencias...
The following message is transmitted by the United States government. Emergency programming has been interrupted to bring you this message through the National Information Center. The zombie attacks have intensified. Over the past few weeks, since beginning in Louisiana in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, a storm that made landfall in New Orleans on August 29, 2005, Zombies have begun overwhelming military forces in the southern regions of the United States, and have spread into a neighboring country of the United Mexican States. Military forces in the northern hemispheres are shown to have far significant headway in holding off the infected due to its weakness in higher altitudes and colder climates. However, zombies tend to grow stronger and more resistant to attacks when exposed to hot and humid climates or around bodies of water. Cases of infections from both the toxic mold and the zombie attacks are now reported in the following states, California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Kansas, Arizona, New Mexico, Nebraska, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, and Connecticut. Over several hundred thousands, or up to a million of deaths are reported in these states as most of them were lost to this toxic mold virus or were either shot or euthanized, and this zombie outbreak has displaced over tens up to hundreds of millions in both the United States and Mexico combined, and this outbreak is only going to get worse. There has been an ongoing debate between members of Congress and House and state representatives on whether they would seek the use of nuclear missiles to wipe out the infected and end this crisis, and the United States government is initiating negotiations with the Mexican government and is in talks with the United Nations for a unified solution. At this time, there is no nuclear emergency taking place. All residents hearing this message are advised to continue following the previous set of instructions as earlier mentioned. Stay in your shelter and avoid getting bitten with the infected or breathing in the spores to avoid transforming into a zombie. Make as little noise as possible as zombies cannot see but only smell or hear. However, residents must be prepared to evacuate to a fallout shelter in the event of a nuclear attack taking place. If there are no fallout shelters in your area, or if heavy presence of zombies prevents you from getting into a fallout shelter, get to the basement or in the centermost portion of your house and place as many objects around you as possible. Prepare to stock up on 14 days worth of food, water, extra clothing, medical supplies, batteries, and a battery-powered radio for your stay in your fallout shelter. It is unknown how long this outbreak will last. Stay tuned to this station or other news sources to continue receiving more updates and information on this dangerous situation. message is transmitted at the request by the United States government. This is not a test. The United States government has reached a decision to initiate nuclear sterilization strikes in an effort to halt the toxic mold infection from spreading into numerous areas in other sovereign states. The targets for these nuclear sterilization strikes include the following areas. Salt Lake City, Utah. St. George, Utah. Las Vegas, Nevada. Los Angeles, California, Phoenix, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Roswell, New Mexico, Odessa, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, 
Dallas, Texas. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Denver, Colorado. Cannon City, Colorado. Grand Island, Nebraska. Omaha, Nebraska. Dodge City, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas. Topeka, Kansas. Kansas City, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri. Little Rock, Arkansas. Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Prescott, Arkansas. Shreveport, Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. New Orleans, Louisiana. Jackson, Mississippi. Oxford, Mississippi. Memphis, Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Atlanta, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. Valdosta, Georgia. Tallahassee, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Miami, Florida. Charleston, South Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina. Simpsonville, South Carolina. Wilmington, North Carolina. Fayetteville, North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina. Richmond, Virginia. Harrisonburg, Virginia. Norfolk, Virginia. Princeton, West Virginia. Charleston, West Virginia. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Baltimore, Maryland. Dover, Delaware and Washington, D.C. Residents residing within a 400-mile radius of these mentioned areas are strongly urged to seek a fallout shelter immediately. Fallout is a byproduct of nuclear explosions. Prolonged exposure to fallout will lead to radiation sickness followed by certain death. Fallout can spread up to hundreds of miles within minutes after detonation. If you do not have a fallout shelter, head to a centermost portion of your house or in a basement, and place as many objects as possible between yourself and the outside world. Be sure to turn off ventilation, heating, and air conditioning systems and to stay off from doors, windows, and exterior walls. Make sure you prepare an emergency kit such as non-perishable food, water, clothing, medical supplies, extra batteries, and a battery-powered radio. Prepare for the three main effects of the nuclear explosion, such as light, heat, and shockwave blast. Light can temporarily or permanently blind any person if facing towards the blast. Heat can vaporize humans and buildings within a 20-mile radius of the blast zone. Shockwave blast can cause partial or complete deafness to humans by bursting their eardrums and could cause severe structural damage. Fallout will appear within minutes after the three aforementioned effects of the nuclear blast and will poison the soil and the environment and kill anyone caught venturing outdoors and being exposed to radiation for long periods of time. Once inside, do not go outside until an all-clear siren is sounded. If no all-clear siren is sounded, wait for at least 14 to 21 days or until the military comes to extract you, as it is unknown whether these nuclear missiles would be enough to completely vaporize all of these zombies. If you wish to evacuate at this time, it is too late to do so. The nuclear missiles are expected to detonate within the next several minutes. Brace for impact. Prepare now for light, heat, and shockwave blast. Forgo evacuation plans and seek shelter now, or you will be vaporized. This station will now cease transmission after the alert. Tune to local radio stations or the AM band to continue receiving news and further instructions during this ongoing national emergency situation. This station will now cease transmission.
please stand by for a message from the President of the United States. Please stand by for a message from the President of the United States. Please stand by for a message from the President of the United States. Please stand by for a message from the President of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, at this time, the situation regarding the infection of Rico zombies that have been ravaging the United States and the neighbor Mexico has never been darker and horrific. A zombie outbreak originating from New Orleans sometime after Hurricane Katrina made landfall in Louisiana after crossing the Gulf of Mexico. It is something that we never anticipated or we never thought this was going to happen. It had all started when this construction company known as Crimson Building Technologies had invented a modular building material around the start of 2005 that said to be insulatable from all kinds of climates and an all-around sturdy material meant to build houses and high-rises or even insulate buildings in a matter of days. At first, it was a great success, but then they made the fatal judgment. When exposed to floodwaters for an extended period of time, it is when this material begins to accumulate mold that produces a mycotoxin which it was identified by the CDC as Stachybotrys charter Byzantium. However, according to scientists, that this cellular structure from Stachybotrys charter Byzantium is unlike anything we have seen before, and it is responsible for the epidemic outbreak that left the southern region of the United States and parts of the Midwest and the East Coast overrun with zombie-like creatures that were born as a consequence of being infected with Stachybotrys charter or Byzantium. This is an outbreak that is worse than SARS, which they had first reported back in November 2002, and it was declared over just more than a year or so ago before Katrina, and all of this mess had occurred. This is unlike anything we have prepared for, and for that, what we did to launch nuclear weapons in these infected areas. It was an extreme but necessary procedure that the Congress has been deciding for a long time after numerous debates from left and right. I had wished it never came to be this way, but we have no other choice, and we cannot take any chances. And when that comes to light, I feel deeply ashamed, and I am sorry for your loss, and I hope you understand. But now, we are sweeping the rug and our military forces, with the help of several Caribbean and European nations, including our North American neighbors, and as where we stand today, we have a mission to wipe out the wake, that is, the zombies that are now taking their toll, due to nuclear winter, fallout, and possibly starvation, as most of the people have been evacuated from the southern states and from parts of Mexico before the nuclear strike. With the nukes flown and our towns and cities blown as a price to eliminate the infected, even though they may be bleeding, we may look wounded as we lost so many lives. Let us not forget about the sacrifices we have made, not just us, but our people as well, men and women, fighting not just for their lives, but for our future generations that is to come. And we will not let this horrific tragedy hinder our progress they made as one nation, nor to make their sacrifices in vain. Once the last of these deadly creatures are snuffed out from the face of the earth, we will rebuild from the ashes. As one nation and a disciple under God, we will come back stronger than before, and we strive to make sure nothing like this will ever happen again. We may have lost part of soul. But we will remain strong, and we will continue to, to soldier forward and stand firm in the midst of the darkest times in our history such as this. Today, America will rebuild, and we are here for you. May God bless us all, and may God bless the United States of America.
That was the message from the President of the United States. We will now return you to the emergency alert system. This is the emergency alert system. All normal cable news and non-emergency programming will return to normal broadcasting operations shortly. The government would like to thank all citizens for your cooperation during this ongoing emergency.